If you've been following the news over the last month or so, you would have definitely come across the Hindenburg report. Now, of course, we all know that that has tanked Adani's shares across all the sectors. But did you know this fun fact? Hindenburg's founder is a CFA. Now, I don't know if you are supporting Hindenburg or not. I don't know if they're doing the right work or not. Uh, and this is not a topic on Hindenburg. It's on the fact that a qualification like CFA has the ability to literally do anything that you desire in the field of finance. So in this video, we're going to talk about what exactly is CFA and is it the right course for you? We've also seen that CFA has made massive changes over the last 50 years uh, and we've actually made a detailed video on this. So for everybody who's now thinking about doing CFA, please also have a uh, look at the video which has all the changes. I'm going to leave a link in the description below and uh, let me jump right into it. So what is CFA? Chartered Financial Analyst. CFA is the number one course when it comes to the field of finance and investment management. And I'm going to explain this in a bit. Uh, the CFA Institute is the body that actually conducts these exams and whose certification has value in the market. The CFA Institute is based out of US, but it also has offices in India with one of them being in Mumbai. Now, I have made a video on the difference between finance and accounts. Once again, I'm going to leave a, a link in the description below. Have a look at it. This is for you all to understand that chartered accounting uh, sort of combines finance and accounts, but CFA is a specialization in the field of finance. Most people are confused. So the gist of it is that finance is all about money. It's about how I acquire, manage and deploy money. And accounting is making sure that you keep track of it and it's used for what we call reporting purposes. Lastly, the real reason why a lot of students in India are pursuing CFA is because they want to become fund managers in some capacity. Fund manager means, let's say you are a CFA. Me and you know maybe 10 other people, right? we have a few savings. Right? Let's say we have one, one lakh rupee saving. 10 of us are. We, we collate our 10 lakhs and give it to you and you put it across all different places in the market. You put it in the stock market, in real estate, in gold, in cryptocurrency, in startups, whatever access you have. Right? Now, when you decide to put it across everywhere, all, all of these aspects will generate some return for you. And hopefully that return, let's say, for example, is 20%. Out of that, you give us 20%, we are very happy because otherwise we would have never been able to make our 20% return had we put it just in the bank or just in one avenue. So you get are adding value to us by generating higher returns. And in turn, you either keep a percentage or a small amount, which is your fees. This is what, what we call portfolio managers. This is what, if I, if I scale this up, this is what mutual funds do. So CFAs are your entryway into these kind of uh, careers. We've even seen, of course, investment banking being a major, major uh, uh, option for students. One of our students, Neil, he, I mean, he's doing tremendously well, where I know that in a year, he's locking three, four massive deals and a lot of small, small deals. I think he's just 25 or 26. Uh, I know CFA has helped him a lot. He networks with really high-end people. Now with that, Understanding for those who don't know about CFA, let me get into the technical details, starting with eligibility. So eligibility is one of the changes that CFA is, uh, you know, removed. Now you can actually appear for the CFA level one 23 months before your graduation, which means if you are in a three year graduation like BCom or BBA, uh, you can appear for your CFA in year two, second year, but you can start studying in your first year. Gone are the days that you had to clear your 12th grade, be excited for CFA, but have to wait for a couple of years because of eligibility. Now, we have students who as soon as grade 12 is over, they start studying because also, even though they have a whole year to study for level one, they land up studying other aspects like financial modeling, they learn Excel. They're even open to basically saying that, okay, let me juggle my college and my CFA studies together. Because once you clear it in your second year, you will have to wait till your graduation for level two. And in that, you can again either study more aspects of CFA, which I'm going to cover. You will you will be able to start studying for level two. You can even start studying for maybe M MBA. Uh, people study GMAT and CAT after level one in the final year of college, so that they can apply to these colleges. And most importantly, after you give your level one, you must start working till the end of graduation uh, to add not only to your own exposure but also to your CV, and it also count towards your CFA charter holder experience. Okay, now. What is the academic structure of CFA? 
So first of all, CFA has three levels, level one, two, three. All of the three have the same 10 subjects, as you can see on the screen. It's just that in level one, there is more weightage on aspects like financial uh, statement analysis and ethics and economics. Whereas by level three, the entire weightage of it shifts to uh, subjects which are more complicated, like derivatives and portfolio management. Uh, one of the other changes that CFA has brought in is that in level three, you can choose a specialized pathway. Uh, earlier, anybody who had just become a portfolio manager as their primary core aspect of, of completing CFA. But now you have an option of either doing uh, private wealth or private markets instead of portfolio management. Again, all part of the new video we made with the changes, please have a look at that. Um, when it comes to the exam duration, how long does it take you to complete CFA? So if you basically are eligible across all the levels, the earliest you can do it is in 18 months. Give each level every six months. That being said, the more average aspects of CFA we've seen are those which are with uh, between two to three years. So let's say you're in your second year, uh, you give level one. Now you have to wait for a year, a year and a half because you have to wait for a graduation before you appear for level two. And then after that, maybe in six months to another year, you can finish level three. So that's around two and a half years approximately or three if you are working and really busy and stuff like that. But my recommendation guys to every student who comes to Zell is uh, do not wait. Just go all out when it comes to studying for CFA. Next comes the exam window. Uh, so the CFA level one exam happens four times a year as of date. Level two happens thrice a year and level three happens twice a year. Level one happens every quarter, every February, May, August and November. Level two, level three, it's on the screen. Uh, when it comes to the passing rate, which means out of how many people uh, who appear for CFA, how many clear? So we have seen that the official stats are ranging between 35% for level one, which means three to four people out of 10 who appear for level one pass the exam. Uh, and it goes up to 50% for level three, which means five out of 10. And yeah, it is a little ironic because ideally you would expect that the tougher the exam, the lesser the passing rate, but that's not the case for CFA because these professional exams, they don't really test you on mugging up or rote learning. They expect that if you've reached level three, you already have work experience. The questions asked are not a right or wrong. It's an opinion based question, which means you and I appearing for the same paper can have different answers and both can pass. Uh, that being said, guys, at Zell, we have a passing rate, which is between 70 to 80 percent, which means seven to eight out of 10 students pass. And by default, right, when you have structure, when you have focus, when you have faculty members who are qualified themselves, right, when you have consistency, you have mocks and tests, by default, you're going to have a higher passing rate. So uh, just for all of you all who basically need any form of support, we're here for you. Next comes the paper pattern. Uh, level one, level two is more or less objective. Level three is a mix of objective and subjective. And finally, all the CFA exams are computer based exams, which means you'll have to appear for them online. Even your test and mocks which you practice should be online, should not be on paper. And you'll have to go to the exam center to land up giving these exams. Next comes the potential scope on what's the value of CFA in the market. Quickly, guys. So when it comes to India, right, uh, I've had not only students, let me just talk about people who I know. Right? So I had a friend who was working at PwC. When she was at PwC, she was nothing but a graduate. After two years of PwC, she left, started CFA. Uh, by the time she's done with level three, she has been working at a very high paying job in a company called Crystal, one of the most successful credit rating companies. And now she's working at Barclays. I've got another friend who was a chartered accountant in BWC, Sharan, and he wanted to study MBA in Rice University in the US. So for that, he studied level one, I think level two, or maybe level one, two, three, all the three levels. But I know he did level one in front of me uh, that time, passed the exam, and that actually helped him with his admission in this university because he wanted to become an investment banker. We also have people uh, who have worked in companies like Motilal Oswal, Anand Rati, JP Morgan. Um, of course, the big four are always there. Grant Thornton, BDO, enough companies that are basically hiring uh, CFAs at packages which range between 6 lakh, go all the way up to 18 lakh, depending on which company, what profile, uh, what kind of interviews, what kind of situation you are in. In fact, one of the most reputed faculty members we have is the vice president of products when it comes to national stock exchange. That's how widespread CFA has become. This is just India. If you talk overseas, again, because it's a US based qualification, globally recognized, literally you go anywhere in the world in the field of finance, it's a recognized powerful qualification. All right, next comes the fee structure. Uh, so the fees is broken down into two parts. 
Uh, one is what you pay the body, which is the more expensive part. Right? You pay the CFA body in dollars. You pay three fifty dollars for a one-time registration cost, and then you pay bit, uh, approximately nine hundred to a thousand dollars for the exam, each exam attempt. So uh, the total, and and then of course there is study material, there is calculator, there are these small miscellaneous expenses, and then there is the training expense. Uh, but if you combine everything. CFA would cost you between three to four lakhs spread over a period of two to three years. Now, the beauty of this is that a you don't have to pay it all at once. B when you pay, you are also going to start working most likely after level one, and more often than not, you start re-earning everything you spent or you earn what you're about to invest in your CFA uh, education. Lastly, even if I don't take into account what you do while studying for CFA. The first job that you are going to get, you are going to be able to make up for the entire CFA investment of the last two three years in maybe the first four to six months of any job that you take. And uh, the only point over here is that if you are thinking of CFA, take advantages of all of this, right? Study and work together, earn and invest together, learn in a way that by the time you are done, whether you study MBA, whether you finish entire CFA by level three, or you are just starting to work and having an incredible life, do not. Misappropriate the way you should approach CFA. Uh, we'll actually make videos on roadmaps for different types of students. If you all prefer, leave that in the comments so we understand what next to make for you. So, guys, I hope that that gives you some form of clarity on uh, not only CFA but most importantly, is it the right course for you? If you found value in this video, then please hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. We're looking forward to seeing you in our next video.